Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've never seen Bono nervous. <laughs> but he's sitting next to me, and he actually is nervous today. I just want you to know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, today we live in a volatile and uncertain world. Even as we meet here today, lives are being lost in the war in Ukraine. And one of the greatest humanitarian disasters of our time is taking place. And this war comes when we have yet to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Some may rightly question, is there anything good going on in the world in the face of such grim realities? The answer is yes, there is. And one of those good things is why we're here today, to hold up a man who has done so much to make the world a better place. It's an honor and a privilege to be here today to introduce someone I have worked with, laughed with, argued with, <laughs> brainstormed with, and found solutions with for almost 20 years now. Now, I've not yet sang with him. <laughs> Bono is my brother. Through good and bad, when I've gone through bad times, he's been there. When I've gone through good times, he's been there. He's been a supporter. Who else will track you down around the world in whatever assignment you take, in whatever city you live in, to make sure that on that one special day of yours, your birthday, you receive a beautiful bouquet of flowers? Bono knows that I love flowers, and each year he spoils me with them. So it is true, it's truly special to see Bono recognized for this prestigious award. The Fulbright name is gold and it's global. And the previous recipients who've seen them of this award for international understanding read like a who is who of our conscience and the best among us. They are recipients that one can start, stand tall with. The world knows Bono and you too, too you too for their music, that's what's been said. That's understandable. The music is pretty great, as uh, we've just experienced in the program. But Bono stands tall above all for the wonderful philanthropic work he has done and is still doing. The personal and the political have always been at the core of Bono's songwriting and music. Over the years, that same passion for justice and equality that desire for people to be able to live lives of dignity drove Bono to take action against poverty. A lot of his advocacy and activism has centered on Africa, my continent. In 1985, Bono traveled to Ethiopia and bore witness to the terrible famine that would kill an estimated one million people, many of them children. The experience led him to learn more about factors underlying the continent's persistence economic difficulties. These included the continuing burden of sovereign debt, distortions in global trade, and the growing HIV AIDS pandemic. In the late 1990s, Bono joined the Jubilee 2000 movement to cancel the debt of African countries, so that instead of paying down debts contracted by Cold War era governments, they could invest in people, in health, education, infrastructure, agricultural productivity. In 2002, together with Bobby Shriver, Jamie Drummond, and others, Bono founded DATA, Debt, AIDS, Trade Africa, to campaign for African debt relief, access to HIV AIDS treatment, trade reform, and accountability on the part of donors and African governments. He also founded RED, as we've all heard. Data ultimately became the one campaign 
which is working to end extreme poverty and preventable disease by 2030. I was privileged to serve on the board of the One Campaign for several years, enabling me to work quite closely with Bono and Gail and the rest of One's wonderful team. In the early 2000s, many sub-Saharan African countries were going through a difficult period with heavy debt burdens and debt service burdens. The HIPIC initiative, originally brought into being largely through the efforts of pre former president of the World Bank, Jim Wolfenson, to help rid low-income countries of unsustainable debt, got strong support from campaigners around the world, not least among them. Bono, Data, and the other efforts and organizations that he put together. I met Bono during my first term as Nigeria's finance minister in 2003 to 2006. At that time, Nigeria had a $30 billion debt burden accumulated over the 1980s and 1990s, and a debt service of, of almost $3 billion a year equivalent to the health and education budget combined, of which the country was barely able to service about a billion a year. One of the topmost priorities of Nigeria's then newly re-elected president, President Obasanjo, was to get this debt forgiven or written off. And he asked me to leave my job at the World Bank at the time to become finance minister to help the government achieve this. But Nigeria was seen as an oil economy and was not eligible for the HIPIC initiative, highly indebted poor countries initiative. So it was my job to help craft a strategy to get the country the debt relief it so badly needed. And civil society support was crucial. In came Bono, Bobby Shriver, the Jubilee Movement, Data, they all came to the rescue. They became a strong voice for our case at the G7 and at the Paris Club. I still remember the Make Poverty History Rally in 2005 at Trafalgar Square with Jubilee 2000 and Nelson Mandela. Bono, do you remember? Yes. Thanks to them, I was able to, with my colleagues from home, make a strong and very public case to for the write-off of Nigeria's debt, and subsequently to convince the Paris Club. We were successful. We got debt relief. All $30 billion was writ written off, and the rest is history. Nigeria's case is just one among the many successful cases of debt write-offs that Bono and the Jubilee 2000 movement supported. The efforts from this movement helped lead to Sub-Saharan Africa's external debt to official creditors from the, for the debt to GDP ratio, coming down from 65% pre hipic to 32% in 2006. This is when you exclude Nigeria and South Africa. This is huge. This is huge. The fiscal space created enabled countries to invest in health, education, and crucial things like infrastructure, rural water supply, rural electricity. Sub-Saharan Africa's GDP grew turned positive and was sustained over the next decade and a half as investment rose on the continent, giving currency to the Africa rising narrative that we heard for some time. Bono saw Africa as central to the good he wanted to do for the world, and his love for the con continent shone through. I still remember arguments with young Africans not so familiar with him or his work, who thought, hmm, this is yet another white man parachuting into our continent. But Bono was, and is vastly different from this. For him, it's about clearing away the injustices, financial and otherwise, <clears throat> preventing Africans from truly working for themselves. At the end of the day, 
You only need to listen to Bono carefully to discern his sincerity, his deep love for humanity, and his unending commitment to Africa. The causes Bono has dev devoted himself to remain all too relevant today. While affordable treatments have brought HIV AIDS under control, a new pandemic ha has left Africans at the back of the queue for vaccines. Today, 15% of Africans are vaccinated compared to over 60% in rich countries. The economic fallout from COVID-19 has pushed millions of Africans into extreme poverty. Nearly 60% of low-income countries, most of them in Africa, are again in debt distress or close to it. An action on debt relief this time around has been too slow. And now the tragic war in Ukraine, by pushing up food and energy prices, threatens further hunger, poverty, and social instability. The question is, how long must we sing this song? So we will, we will need Bono to keep up his advocacy work in the months and years ahead. If you thought that you were going to get, have any rest or retire Bono, <laughs> that's not going to happen. You won't even have time to rest on your now well-end laurels. I know there's no one who deserves this award more than you, but you have work to do, my brother. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today and with my two sons. <laughs> Who hold you in such high esteem to witness you, what is going to happen today? What is happening today? and to introduce you as my brother forever and my friend. Congratulations, Bonnie.